Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Arai Torcross 4 helmet. This is the most recent version of Arai's Adventure Helmet. It's been in their range for nine years already, but it's still going strong and it continues to make a lot of riders very satisfied. Some of those riders are on their second or even their third Torcross 4, which shows it has a very loyal following. The shell on this helmet is Arai's Superfiber Laminate. It's a composite of fibers that's designed to deliver the strength needed for Arai's protection philosophy. Arai shells tend to be stronger than many other fiber shells, which allows them to use a softer EPS impact liner. Arai strongly believe this makes the helmets more protective than using the alternative method, which is having a lighter shell and then a harder EPS impact liner behind it. Having a stronger shell does mean our eyes tend to be a little heavier than many other lids. This Torcross 4 is a size medium and it weighs in at 1683 grams on our scales. That's with the peak and the visor fitted. It's not light, but neither is it the heaviest adventure lid and at least our eye have a solid reason to explain why their helmets weigh a little bit more than your usual helmet. Venting on an adventure helmet like this is really important because if they're gonna be used off-road, then airflow is crucial for riders who aren't just plonked in the saddle all day. There are two vents behind the peak with simple rocking switches here, and then there are two exhaust vents at the rear, which can be opened and closed on these rocker switches. Our eyes trademark brow vents come on the visor and they deliver more cooling air. They come through these vents here and then are channeled into ducts at the top of the interior, just here, and then they flow down the side of your temples, giving you a good amount of inflowing air as you're riding along. The last area of venting on this helmet is the one that takes the most describing, as there are three stages to the chin venting. The central vent opens in two stages. There's one external shutter here, and then there's one on the inside of the helmet under here. Having both of these open allows air to flow directly to the rider's mouth. If you have the outside shutter open and the inside shutter closed, that forces air up through the chin bar towards the inner surface of the visor. In addition to that, air can flow through these grills on the front of the helmet and you operate those with sliding vents just on the inside here. Moving to the visor, it's pinlock protected and there's a Pinlock 120 insert in the box. That's the middle of the three levels that they provide. Some owners found the Pinlock tricky to fit on this helmet, which is understandable on an adventure lid because the curve of the visor is much more exaggerated than normal, and it takes a lot more effort to straighten the visor to be able to fit that insert. Once it is inserted, a lot of people are really complimentary about the anti-mist properties, and I also found them to be really effective in the time that I spent with this helmet. To remove that visor, first you need to take off the peak. There's no quick release attachment for the peak on this helmet and you need a screwdriver or a coin to undo the screws that are holding it in place. Somewhere along the line, this Torcross 4 design has been changed to make it easier to remove and refit the peak. When you undo these screws, they, they don't fall away. There's a little retainer plate that just means they stay in one piece with the peak, which makes it easier to replace it. You can put the peak back on without refitting the visor, which means you can use this helmet with goggles. The frames fit snugly in the eye port, and then there's room for the straps just underneath the mounting for the peak here. You can also put the visor back on without the peak, which gives you a street styled helmet. To do that, first you need to remove these screws and you'll also need to free them from that retaining plate. And then you have additional pressure plates as these are called to refit the visor without the peak being in place. Peaks like this sometimes cause problems when you're riding along and you've got drag and some aerodynamic problems, although there's a fairly clear consensus among the customer reviews for this helmet that it's not a big issue with the Torcross 4. Personally, I had no problems when riding on a Yamaha Tenere 700. There are some people among the 140 customer reviewers who preferred to remove the peak for long journeys, so it is a handy option to have. There's no internal sun visor with this helmet, our eyes just don't believe in them and don't fit them, so you can't have one with this. Some our eyes have the option of an external sun visor, but even that's not an option with this helmet. 
There is a light reactive pin lock insert that's available, but the customer reviews on that aren't great. So you're likely to want a tinted visor if you need protection from glare, and that'll mean switching from dark to clear visors depending on the light conditions. Moving to the interior, it's typically Arai. It's soft, it's comfy, and it's moisture wicking. So it suits active riding rather than just laid back touring. It's fully removable, and there's also a certain amount of tailoring you can do. There's a five millimeter layer of foam on the outer surface of each cheek pad, which you can remove and that creates a bit more room either side of your face. It's best to be sure that you need that extra room before you remove the layers, as I'm pretty sure you're not gonna be able to put those bits of foam back in there if it turns out you preferred it when it was thicker. The removable skull pad around the top also has some removable sections. Arrow calls them temple pads and they can be taken out to create more space at the side of the head. The owner's manual for the helmet says you can stick those back in if you use some double-sided tape. So if you find that you preferred it before, there is at least the option to go back to the original setup. There's no official intercom for this helmet, but there's nothing that I can see to stop universal intercoms going on one, and there's plenty of customers amongst the reviews who've done that. Senna also make an Arai-specific kit that will fit neatly to this helmet, although it is worth noting that Senna themselves don't recommend the kit for smaller sizes of this helmet. Continuing with the interior, there's one neat addition to this lid. The chin curtain can be pulled down and this acts as a wind deflecting spoiler to help keep that cold and noisy air away from the base of the lid. The final piece of the interior puzzle is the strap fastener. This is an Arai and that means you're gonna get a sporty D-ring strap. One neat touch with that though, the covers that protect your skin from wear against that strap can be taken off and washed. Last but not least, approvals. As you'd expect, this helmet is fully road approved to ECE 2205 as a full face helmet. It also has ACU gold approval for use in competitions or on track. It's not rated by the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme. That's not unusual as Sharp doesn't appear to have ever tested a helmet that comes supplied with a peak. I hope that tells you everything you want to know about the very popular Arai Torcross 4 Adventure Helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop your comment below. Thanks for watching.